Hello everyone, today in this video we'll be discussing the module 4 of ADA, super important questions and these are from the previous papers, the most repeated ones, don't miss any of these questions and before starting please do like and subscribe, it helps me make more videos like this and if you have any questions you can DM me on Instagram so without wasting more time let's get started the first question is about Kruskal's algorithm okay so in the exam they can ask you the Kruskal's algorithm to construct a minimum cost spanning tree okay and a graph will be given the first thing what you need to do is arrange in ascending order what you will arrange in ascending order the numbers which you can see here the numbers are nothing but the cost of edges okay so you will be arranging it B to C is there right 1 is there so you will be writing 1 here first then E to F E to F is where E to F is 2 here so then you will be writing that a to B is then 3, then uh, B to F and C to F it is 4. So you'll be keeping on writing like this and sort it. Okay, after that, take one by one. You'll take BC first, then you'll be connecting B and C. So the aim is to connect all the nodes. Okay, so BC is connected. Next is EF. So EF is connected here. Next is which AB. Okay. A, B, A and B is connected here. Then uh, it is B, F and C, F, right? So B, F, B, F is connected. Now C, F, do we need to connect or not? No, we not, don't, don't need to connect. Why? Because C and F both are already taken here, right? From here it is connected and from here also it is connected. And C is connected from here. So we need not uh, again make a uh, line like this. Okay, so we'll skip C, F. What about A, F? A is also taken, F is also taken. So we'll skip A, F. What about D, F? D, F, D, F. F is taken but D is not taken. Taken, right so what we'll do we'll make a line here so that D will also be taken when in case both are taken will not uh, make a edge okay now if you observe carefully a is taken b is taken c is taken d is taken e is taken f is taken so this forms our solution the highlighted lines is there right remove all of the rest of the lines and the highlighted line lines remain uh, which is the answer of this uh, problem okay Moving on to the next question, we have Huffman trees. What is a Huffman tree? It is a special type of binary tree that is used for data compression. It is the core of Huffman uh, coding and algorithm that designs assigns variable lengths uh, binary codes that input characters based on the frequencies. Okay, so this is the definition you need to write in exam. Okay, and uh, the question will be given like this: our characters will be given here, and after that, probabilities will be given. We'll be asked to find out the codes for it and then encode the following uh, word which is given. Okay, DAD hyphen CBE. Okay. Now what we'll do is we'll arrange in ascending order. What we'll arrange in ascending order? These numbers 0 0.5, 0 0.35, 0 0.5, 0 0.1, 0 0.4, 0 0.02. If you arrange in ascending order, we'll get a D at the first place and C at the last place. Okay, and you can interchange A and C because they are same. After arranging this in ascending order, start from the least two. Okay, least two is 0 0.1 and 0 0.2. Now if we combine 0 0.1 and 0 0.2, we'll be getting 0 0.3 here. Keep it as such. After that, we have B and E. Combine B and E. When we combine B and E, it will become what B and V when we combine 0 0.35 and 0 0.4 it will become 0 0.75 keep it as such okay next what you need to do is after combining the first two and the second two then you will compare with A and C okay A is 0 0.5 okay and here we have 0 0.3 so the smaller numbers comes in the left and the greater number comes in the right so we can take either A or C here we will be uh, keeping it as such after that we will do the same thing again here so it will be 0 0.8 and C is remaining so C also when you compare with 0 0.75 you will be getting C in left place when we will do that we'll get 1.25 here when we'll take the uh, addition of 1.25 and 0 0.8 we'll get 2.05 after this what you have to do is the left part will be zeros and the right part will be ones okay so left part will be zeros and right part will be ones so this is left part here it is a zero here also it's a left part here it is a zero here also it's a left part so here it is a zero here it's the right part so it is one here is the right part it is one here is the right part it is one and here also it is left part so it is zero and this is left path and this is right path and this is right path okay so after doing this we'll be getting the code for all of the numbers how you calculate the code for example if i ask you what is the code of a seeing this figure code of a means if you start from here which branches you need to go to reach a okay i repeat if you start from here which branches you need to go to reach a if i start from here i'll go to this branch it is zero then i'll come from this branch it is one i reached a so the a's code is zero one okay like that i've written a's code is zero one like that to reach b where is b b is here to reach b I have to go 1, 1, and 0, right? So B's code will be 1, 1, 0, and so on for these all. Okay. After you have got the codes, the half problem is done. Second problem they have asked is to decode DAD hyphen CBE, right? So what is the code of D? The code of D is 0, 0, 0, right? It is written here. So just copy paste here. A 0 0.1, D 0, 0, 0, hyphen 0, 0, 1, and CBE 
वन जीरो वन वन जीरो एंड वन 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 फ्रॉम दिस टेबल राइट सो दिस इज द एनकोडिंग ऑल्सो सो दिस टू टाइप्स ऑफ क्वेश्चन कैन बी आस्ट इन हफ मैन ट्रीज नेक्स्ट इज अपलाइड एक्स्ट्रा सेलगोरिथम टू फाइंड सिंगल सोर्स शॉर्टेस्ट पाथ फ्रॉम द गिवन ग्राफ कंसिडरिंग एस एज द सोर्स वर्टिक्स सो द मेन एम ऑफ एक्स्ट्रा सेलगोरिथम इज स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम हियर आई वॉन्ट टू रीच द एंड इन दिस आई हैव टू इंक्लूड ऑल द नोट्स विच एवर आई हैव टू एंड आई हैव टू फाइंड आउट द शॉर्टेस्ट पाथ एमोंग दम ओके सो What I'll be doing in this case is s. Uh, first, I'll take the starting vertex s. Okay, hyphen and zero. Hyphen means from nowhere I'm coming to s. S is the starting point, and zero means to reach s. How much distance is required? I'm starting from s to reach s. The distance required is zero. Now, from s, which all are connected? The remaining vertices from s a is connected with the uh, length a. Uh, I mean length one. So, a is connected to s via length one. Like that, B also. B is connected to S via length phi. B is connected to S via length phi. C, D, and E are not directly connected with S, so they will be marked as uh, hyphen and infinity. Okay. An illustration means whichever whichever is selected here. Here A and B is selected, right? So A and B will be making the neighbors which are reachable. Okay. After that, we have to select the minimum one. Here one is minimum or five is minimum. One is minimum, so we'll be uh, considering A S one here. So A S one. Now from A. From A, where all I can go? I can go to C. I can go to D. I can go to B. Whenever I go to C, D, or B, I'll be checking the previous values as well. Suppose I want to go from A to C. Previously, what was the cost of C? It was infinity. Now, if I go from A to C, what will be my cost? Two. But I have to go through one and then two, right? So it will be one plus two, and I'm going through A. So it will be one plus two and A here with C. Same thing goes for B also. B also, if I go through A, it will be one plus two. Okay, so it will be three. And if I go directly, it would it would have been five, which is lesser. Three or five, three is lesser. So we consider uh, consider that three. And same thing goes with D also. If I go to D, previously it was infinity. Now it is two, right? So I'll be writing here one plus one. And I'm going through A, and E is still remaining uh, unreachable. So it will be hyphen and infinity. Next, whatever I have uh, been able to reach, I'll make the um, edges for that. Okay. After that, select the minimum one. Here the cost is three. Here the cost is three. Here the cost is two. Here the cost is infinite. So we'll be selecting this one, which is D. D A two. Now from D I'll be again seeing whichever I have already visited that I'll not see. Okay. From D where all I can go? I can go to just to uh, E with the cost two. So I'll be writing the same thing. E I can go with the cost two plus two. Why two plus two? Because to reach D from A I am getting the cost two. So to reach the E value, I have to first cross D, then I have to cross uh, E, right? So it will be uh, two plus two like that. Okay. After that, uh, I have drawn the graph here, and after that again, uh, the least one among these three is the B and C. You can choose anyone. I choose B. Now B to C, I don't have direct path, right? B to C, I don't have direct path. So I'll keep the previous one only, which is A three. What about E? From B, do I have a direct path to E? I don't have a direct path to E, so I'll be keeping it as such. Okay. Next, again, I'll take this next one, which is C. From C to E, I have a direct path. No, I'll keep it as such. Okay. And finally, E will be taken into consideration, and there is no other shorter path, which is uh, from the E value. So I'll be keeping it as such, which is the final answer here. Okay. So this is the answer for the given question. Next is uh, define a transitive closure of a graph. Apply Warshall's algorithm to compute transitive closure of a directed graph. Okay. Now this is the graph which will be given. First, understand the definition. Transitive closure of a directed graph with n vertices can be defined as n cross n Boolean matrix in which element in the i th row and the j th column is one if there exists a non-trivial path between the vertex i and j. If there is a vertex uh, between the, I mean, if there is an edge between the node i and node j, then the edge value there it will be one. Okay, means in the graph if there is a uh, node, uh, if there is an edge. From A to B, so here I'll be marking as one like that. That type of matrix is called transitive closure. Now the question is, uh, we have to find out the least path using the Warshall's algorithm. Okay, the closure of a directed graph, transitive closure. For that, what you need to do is take the uh, take into consideration first row and first uh, first column and first row, and wherever you find one, there you uh, mark it. Okay, this is one here and this is also one here. When you find two ones. Stretch it down and stretch it to the right. Whatever the place you get here, mark it as one. So here it is marked as one. Okay. After that, there is no other uh, ones are present, so we'll skip. Next, when we go, we'll be uh, selecting the second column and second row. When you do that again, the same thing you have to do. Mark the ones. One, one is here, one is here, and one is here inside the boxes. Okay. Now, if one is here and one is here, I can mark this also as one because if you stretch it, extend it, it will be pointing to this location. So this will become one. And if we use this one and this one. 
this will also eventually become one so two things became one after this iteration here is the one and here is another one you get the point right how i'm getting these ones after that what you have to do in this case there is only single one and there is no other supporting one so we'll keep uh, uh, ignore it and if you take the last row and the last column we'll have many ones here right so we'll take one by one this one with this one that means if you extend it both it is pointing to this location so here it should become one so here they have made it as one next this one with this one so already one is here this one with this one so here it should become one so this one here it became one okay next uh, same goes for this one and uh, yeah same goes for this one so it will be this will become one and this will become one and this will become one because each of these extensions there is one here so these three will become uh, become one and this one is there already here there is uh, only a single element is a diagonal element will be ignoring it okay because there is no row and column for this value okay next what we need to do after doing this one this will be a final answer so basically what does what shells algorithm mean is if you have, if you can go from a to b and b to c you can also go from a to c because this is one and this is one okay uh, a to b you can go and b to c you can go that is the meaning of this okay see wherever we made as one okay so previous to that i can go from a to uh, b okay a to b there is uh, one here and this one is also present here a d to a right means i can go from uh, a to b and a to d also so uh, basically if i pass from a i can go from b to d also so I'll be making this point also as one that is also reachable but indirectly okay so Warshall's algorithm uh, makes it uh, obvious which are the indirect paths as well okay so this is the uh, thing you need to write for the Warshall's algorithm moving on you have the prims algorithm Ob explain the concept of greedy technique in the prims algorithm obtain a minimum cost spanning tree for the given graph below so our graph is given we have to first explain the greedy technique for the prims algorithm prims algorithm is a classic example of greedy method used to find the minimum spanning tree of a connected uh, weighted and undirected graph it is a greedy approach why because it makes the locally optimal choice and with the hope of reaching globally optimal solution if you are making a locally global uh, optimal choice we may not reach the global solution why because we will be at the uh, max level of the local only and global might be more max and since this is max we will not explore further so there is uh, that is called as greedy method okay now the given graph is given uh, the graph is given in the question so this is the graph okay and we'll be making node and remaining what is an illustration so basically here what we need to do start from the starting node a okay a to b i can go with the distance one and i can go to d with the distance two i can go to c with the distance three and e i cannot go so it will be infinity now i'll be selecting the least one here so least value is a comma one here the other ones are greater than one so this one i'll select when i select this one that means i have to make a highlight between a and b with the cost associated with that so here it is one after doing that you'll be selecting this b here and keeping it here now from b's perspective from b's perspective i can go to d and i can go to a but a is already taken so we'll be just focusing on d to go to d my cost is 5 but from a i have uh, been able to go with 2 so which is the least one the least one is 2 so i'll not make any change to the previous one okay here a is uh, 5 so i'll not make any change to the previous one after that e is still infinite we cannot reach to e through b okay so uh, what is the one which i'll consider the least one the least one here is d right so b to d so <clears throat> I mean uh, a to two, uh, a to d which is costing 2 this is the least one so I'll be making that graph here okay means the least value 2 to reach the d next I'll be taking d into consideration since it was the least cost from here I'll ch check again a and d what is the distances here in e I'll be getting the value a right if we select d so if you go to uh, go through d the cost is 8 so uh, which is the least one here the least one is uh, c a comma 3 so e, c a comma 3 I will take and uh, to reach e via c via c if i reach e how much is costing to it's costing to me it's costing me seven so i'll be selecting that seven here okay instead of the previous one which i have written eight here through c i can go it uh, go in a more lesser cost so it will be c comma seven and i'll be making a edge from c to seven okay this is how prims algorithm works the last question is explain greedy criterion apply the greedy method for following instance of knapsack problem now what is greedy criterion greedy means at the same point of time immediately what rewards can be maximized that is called as greedy concept okay and apply the greedy method for the following instance of the knapsack now this weight and the items will be given to you values will be given capacity will be given you first have to make this table make this table and write i is equal to 0 to 4 and uh, this capacity is 0 to 5 now why i have written 0 to 4 the items are 4 so i means items so items will be 
keeping it here and we'll start from zero so it will be zero one two three four next is capacity capacity means the maximum capacity is five right so here i'll be writing zero one two three four five after that what you have to do is you have to assign each weight now suppose i have to select the any of the items and keep here okay now this is the number of items number of items zero means i cannot carry anything so it will be all zeros here what about uh, one if it is one means i can carry any of this element and if i carry any of this element i will be selecting the element the first one which is one comma two okay so the first item i'm going to select this is the item number one i'll be selecting that when you select that the weight is two so the weight is 2 there i'll get a profit of 12 so weight is 2 i'm getting a profit of 12 that 12 i'll be writing here and for 0 and 1 i'll not write anything because it is not selected okay because it is not selectable weight is 2 so at least capacity should be 2 to uh, sell it and i'll get a price of 12 dollars next if the capacity is 3 it doesn't make any difference i just have uh, one item which i can store here this also the one item only this also one item only so here in one item the capacity if it is 2 this is the maximum values which you can get same thing goes if i am including two elements uh, two means in two elements i can choose any of these two elements which can maximize my profits so here uh, in zero weight it's nothing from in one weight one weight means i can choose this one right uh, the item number two the weight is one and i'll get a profit of 10 so i'll be writing the profit 10 here next is capacity 2 capacity 2 i can take this one instead of this one why because this has greater value here so i'll be taking this one so when i take this one the profit uh, will be here 12 okay and after that the capacity is 3 if the capacity is 3 i can i uh, carry these two items together if i carry these two items together it will be 22 and 4 5 also it will be 22 only there is no other greater uh, value in this two considerations item one and item two if they consider uh, start the third item so third item means this three okay now these three means weight will be two plus one three three plus three six whenever there is six i can carry these three items if it is not six i have to choose uh, the two items okay so which items i can choose so with weight zero i cannot choose anything with weight one i can choose the ten dollar one with weight two i can choose the twelve dollar one with weight Three, I can choose this one or I can choose this one. So 12 plus 10 is 22 and 3 is 20. So I'll choose 22, right? 22 is greater value. So I'll choose 22. If it is 4, if it is 4 means I can choose uh, the value which is 3 plus 1, right? I can choose 3 plus 1, these two items. When I choose, it will be 30. So it will be 30. And if the value is 5, I can choose 5, whichever is the uh, weight is coming to us 5 in the top 3. So here 3 plus 2 is 5. So it will be 10 plus 20, uh, 12 plus 20 is 32. So 32 I'll be writing here. Like that, I'll do the last one also. In last one, all the weights are allowed. All the values are also uh, available to use. So here, if I uh, add up all of these 2 plus 2 4 4 plus 1 5 5 plus 3 7 so 7 capacity is not there i cannot carry all still i have to do some um selection so here if capacity is 1 it is 10 as a previous uh, it's obvious from the previous uh, filling and here if it is 2 means the best thing i can take is 15 because the new thing is unlocked here which has 15 with the weight 2 next is uh, 3 3 means with 2 I can add this one so it will be 25 so I will be writing here 25 if it is 4 means I can carry this 2 and this 2 or I can carry these 2 if I carry this and this it will be 27 if I carry these 2 it will be 30 so I will take 30 into consideration last is 5 5 means the uh, total weight should be 5 and what is the my greatest profit so if I consider what the value as 5 what can be the greatest weight 3 plus 1 for the 4 this was the uh, condition right uh, 30 but I cannot uh, take 30 what I will be taking instead is I'll be taking 15 here and 12 so 15 plus 12 is 27 right and I'll be taking 1 here so 2 plus 2 is 4 4 plus 1 is 5 the weight is satisfied and I'm get, I have got the maximum value so every time you will not get the maximum value at the end why because in between also if you have got the absolute value you if you have chosen the values okay in that case oh, but most of the cases it will be in the end only so this is how you solve the knapsack using greedy approach and if you found this video helpful please like and subscribe it helps make more videos like this and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next